how important is it for Ithaca to have a big man so efficient and so defensively enabled to block shots like Miles Herman? Well, let's compare, if you will, the two teams that we've seen here tonight, the women's team and the men's team. Coach Dan Raymond for the women's team uses everyone off the bench. He, everyone has their assigned role. Jim Mullins a little more reluctant to go to that 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th guy uh, off the bench. And so if he has a guy like Herman who could come off, know his role, play significant minutes, and play well, and not make young player mistakes, that's an invaluable asset to have for a team. Miles Herman coming into today was 15 of his last 19 from the floor. Today he's four for four, so just very efficient on the offensive end, knows his role. Win Miller, the corner three, that's long. Didn't even hit rim on that. Swiped away was Cooper Macklin, but they're gonna call a foul on the ground. It's gonna be charged to Macklin on Thompson. Yeah, it's, it's a tough call there. I mean, he's just trying to force another turnover, uh, but they do get the diminished shot clock somewhat as only 20 seconds left. We're gonna send it down to Matt Hornick here with a little update from us. Take it away, Matt. Thanks, Anthony. I, I was walking behind the uh, Ithaca bench before the game, and I happened to notice that uh, Coach Mullins keeps a couple of packages of Fig Newtons behind the bench, and I spoke to a grad assistant, Ahmad Boyd, about what that is. He says as long as he's been here, Mullins has been doing this. Uh, maybe it's a good luck charm. He didn't exactly explain why. I just thought it was a little interesting to see uh, what Mullins does. It doesn't look like they've been opened yet, but I guess we'll see what goes on with those later in the game. Uh, back up to you guys. So Fig Newtons from Jim Mullen, that's the secret it seems to be. When you were playing Reed, any, any superstitions you had? Oh, I was one of the most superstitious people ever. I had to walk into the arena the same way. I had to you know, wear the same clothes. Uh, if we were on a winning streak, you know, you'd do the whole not shaving thing. <laughs> but uh, Fig Newtons, that's a new one. I'll, next time I have a big test, I'm going to bring a box of Fig Newtons in. Fig Newtons, definitely an interesting strategy. We've seen Marshawn Lynch with the Skittles. Everybody's got their own thing. Yeah, and at least he's going healthy. It's not <laughs> teeth rotting candy. Very true. Bell Isaac at the line. He was good on the first, good on the second. 67-37 is your score. Bombers lead it. Been in control from the start, thanks to a lot of threes out of the gate. Now Joey Flanagan in the game, driving left, had a step there on Evan Lamson. Lamson recovers and tipped it away. Nice steal there from Bard. Bard showed flashes of good defense, and how that wasn't a walk, I'll never Ooh, know. Ooh, high off the glass. Zach Jacobs, you got to flip it up. Really high off the glass when Miles Herman's in your face. That's exactly what Jacobs did. Somehow got it to fall. Got it over the 6'8 frame and then some. Now at the other end. Brian Carl in the game, gives over to Cooper Macklin. So a duo of freshmen for the Bombers, Macklin and Carl. Here is Macklin swing at the Carl in the corner over to Flanagan now on the wing. Flanagan step back three, just off the rim around and out, could not get it to fall. Zach Jacobs, the freshman guard at the other end for Bard now. Taking on the freshman, Brian Carl, gives over to Wynn Miller now. Bard just passing around the three-point line, looking for any penetration they can get. And here is some. Nope, kicks it back out to Win Miller. He's going to take the three. Left it short again. Miles Herman soaring for that rebound. He was just the tallest man on the court right there. Just easy pickings for him. Alderete driving to the hole in the fast break. He's going to draw the foul. That is Bard's first team foul of the second half. It's going to be on Win Miller, sophomore from Washington, Maryland. Bring in wholesale changes for Bard. Uh, get some of their big stars back out there, or guys that have played big roles in the beginning of this game. They're starting to climb back into it a little bit. I mean, none of it looks good when you're down by 67 to 39. Yeah, time is running out. Bank shot there from Alderete, too strong. Quickly to the other end is Zach Jacobs. They are pushing the tempo of the Raptors. Stop pop at the elbow, no good. Herman soaring across the lane for the board. Great hustle to get that rebound. He knows when he's playing well, and that's this is one of those nights he's getting set to pick this screen right here. Nice pick and roll. You called it, Reed. The pick and roll. Two-man game. Too easy. Cooper Macklin to Miles Herman for the deuce. And when Miles Herman is really cooking like this, you can see the confidence level just rise through the roof, honestly. Herman feels like he can get any board right now and can score any bucket. He's a perfect five for five from the field tonight. Well, when you have a night like this where just everything is working, both offensively and defensively, and of course on the boards as he picks up yet another, uh, when you have all of those facets of the game working for you, it's just a great thing. You, you play with more confidence. You have you see the court just a little bit better. Your passes are a little bit, a uh, little crisper, uh, and that's exactly what they need. Herman tonight, 10.7 rebounds in search of a double-double. 
Peter Azim has already locked up a double-double, 16 and 10. And Jason leading the way with points, 16 as well. He has three dimes to boot. I gotta say, this is probably the most complete game I've seen from this men's team in quite a long time. I mean, end to end, uh, both facets of the game, offensively and defensively, are working. And the lack of clean shots and penetrative shots from Bard is really impressive. John Miller trying to get some penetration into the into the paint, loses it there out of bounds. Last touch by Miller going back to the Bombers. Back to your point, Reed, about this being a complete game for the Bombers. I would have to agree with you. Just complete domination. They're controlling the boards, not turning it over. They shot 60% from the field in the first half. You can't ask for much more if you're Mullins. Now looking for more Cooper Macklin, trying to get into the lane. Now feeds it off to Herman, and he misses his first shot of the game. A little too strong off the glass at the other end. It's David Runcy trying to get something quick for the Raptors. Being guarded by Eldorette. Well, they finally found a way on that defensive possession to control Herman. They put two guys on him, and he still almost scored. And there are foul down low, going to be charged to Brian Carl. Great job by Wynn Miller forcing the contact, driving strong to the hole. You'd like to see Bard do a little more of that in this game going on, but they got down by so much so early, they were kind of reluctant. They had to rely on that three-point shot to try and get back into it. There's only so much you can do when you know that you're just being beaten down on all facets of the court. And you can see also, the, I think the biggest thing to point out is the, the timeouts left. Bard only has one timeout left to Ithaca's five, and that's because Bard has really had to call the majority of the strategy sessions. I mean, things have not gone well for them as uh, Wynn Miller knocks down those two. So they have a successful trip there. They finally break over the 40-point line. Uh, but to do that here at 10.48 to go is definitely not how they envisioned this game going. Coming into tonight, I thought it would be a really tightly contested matchup. Bard, top 50 team in rebounding. That's Ithaca's one, of, one of Ithaca's weakness. They're also 10th in three-point defense, and Ithaca loves to rely on the three-pointers. So Ooh. I thought it would be a tough matchup as Lenza misses the bunny there, controlled by Bard. Well, you heard Matt Hornick with, with Coach Mullins heading into halftime. I mean, he, even he said he didn't expect this kind of showing, but that's what happens when you're dealing with a bunch of injuries. You're a young team, and just trying to scratch and claw for any amounts of respect you can pull out. The strength from Bell Isaac there to get that one up and in down low. Nice play by Jelani Bell Isaac. He's been the bright spot today for Bard, senior leader on the court. 